Thanks to those of you who submitted questions in advance. After the presentation, our guests will have an opportunity to answer your questions. Now on to the event you're waiting for. Cherise Davids made history in 2018 when she became one of the first two Native American women elected to Congress and the first openly LGBTQ person to represent Kansas in Washington. A former mixed martial artist and first generation college student, Cherise worked her way through Johnson County Community College in the district she now represents before eventually earning a law degree from Cornell Law School. She went on to work at economic and community development in tribal reservations, including Pine Ridge. Sharice was later selected to the prestigious White House Fellowship Program under President Barack Obama. Sharice was inspired to public service by her single mom, who served as an Army drill sergeant. She is a resident of Roland Park, Kansas. Joshua Mengeshek Pewis Steckley is an Ojibwe woodland artist from Barrie, Ontario, and a member of Wakusang First Nation. He is currently an artist and resident at Skashway Lodge in Vancouver, British Columbia, practicing his acrylic painting and illustration techniques. His, first, his fine art focuses on promoting and reclaiming Ojibwe stories and teachings in a modern interpretation of the woodland tradition. Sharice's big voice is Joshua's second picture book. And now on to the event you're waiting for. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. How's it going? Well, <laughs> um, well thanks for doing this tonight. I'm so excited that we are, are getting the chance to have a conversation, um, although a lot, of, a lot, hopefully a lot of people will see it. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to just like share this uh, Zoom space with you and also I was just sitting here. I got a little bit distracted because I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of daydreaming about maybe coming to visit you in Vancouver because I love Vancouver. Oh, wow. Yep. Uh, I, I used to go out there to train. I did Capoeira for a long time and I would go out there and train with like, with um, the group that I, that I trained with started out in Vancouver. So, okay. um, yeah. well, I think like I, I, de I definitely want us to get into kind of a conversational type of um, uh, thing here in a few minutes, but um, I think a lot of folks might want to hear a little bit about how uh, how this book came uh, to to be. So I'll probably talk a little bit about that, and then um, and then would love to hear in a lot of ways like your pers your perspective about how how this played out because um, I'm very, very interested in, and I think a lot of people are at least based on all the questions that folks ask, ask me in your uh, style, in your um, kind of coming into, uh, coming like coming into your own and being the artist that you are. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited uh, for us to be sharing, sharing this uh, space tonight. Yeah, definitely. Me too. Um, yeah, I'm really excited uh, how the book turned out and to just share this conversation with you and just maybe. Is it my, is yeah. it my mom? Oh, sorry, that's my phone. <laughs> um, <Is it> Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my auntie's congratulating me. Um, yeah. yeah, just to speak with you, you're just such a like a well-known person in the Indigenous community and you've had so much success and it's just uh, yeah, an honor to share this space with you. Um, yeah, and I look forward to just sharing a little bit about uh, my process and just, um, yeah, how this sort of book came to be. Yeah, well, maybe I can just, okay, so um, I've got, well, I have that copy back there. I've got this one, can flip through it here in a little bit, but, um, you know, I got elected to Congress in 2018, um, along with um, literally the most diverse uh, class to ever be elected to the United States Congress, um, which is obviously like an honor and, um, and kind of cool. Uh, and and I have the privilege of, uh, well, now she's left me to go to the Department of Interior. Don't worry, I'm happy about it. Um, but, you know, serving alongside Deb Holland as the first two Native women was, um, I'm actually not sure I've still not sure I've processed it completely, but, um, you know, shortly after I got elected, I was having a conversation with Nancy, who's the, the co-author. Um, we've known each other for, uh, for years now. And, you know, I had basically just was like, 
I, I think it'd be cool to write a kid's book. And, um, and Nancy is a creative writing expert. And we ended up spending a lot of weekends and um, nights uh, talking about this stuff. And, um, and as the project started to move along, I thought it was, I felt as though it was very important. Um, and I felt fortunate that everyone on the team thought that it was really important to, um, to, to really take the time to find uh, an indigenous artist. And um, I remember, uh, you know, seeing a number of different examples and we talked about a number of different um, uh, uh, artists to, to, you know, reach out to and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, for folks who don't already know this, it's, um, you know, the, the jingle dress, uh, Google, I don't know what the Google doodle, Google doodle. <laughs> Yeah. Google doodle. Well, I, did, I was going to say that. And then I was like, is that what it's called? Or is that just me? Like I also called the original, the, the, the technical term is fold and gather the, of the book that doesn't have the hard copy oh, in it sure. that I got, but I was just calling it my floppy copy because it doesn't have a, it's not bound and it's just a bunch of papers. Um, and so I didn't want to call it Google doodle in case that wasn't actually what it was, but um I mean, I, I just, the first like couple pieces that I saw, um, uh, of your work and, and then, and then of course, once you started sending us, um, uh, drafts is probably not that we'll get me on board with the right Rough scripts, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, to start off with was just like, I, I was blown away then I continue to be blown away by your, um, by your art. And so I think like, I would, I would love for you to just kind of share with us what it was like to work on. Um, you've done another picture book, but I think you said this is your first like kids or children's. Um, well, yeah, this was my first one that I illustrated. Um, I finished the other one afterwards, but it was oh, okay. for this one. So yeah, this was the actually the first job I got in the children's book world. Um, and it was yeah, just pretty crazy to sort of get that uh, offer from you know, HarperCollins, uh, just uh, sort of illustrating a story about you uh, to be my sort of first book. And um, it was kind of intimidating. And uh, yes, yeah, so they sort of offered it to me and they wanted me to do like a sample page uh, to see if I was the right fit. And uh, so I did that one. and. Um, they said it wasn't perfect and they wanted to give me a, another shot, which is, I think, um, something they don't normally do. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough to get a second shot at it and uh, they turned out to really love uh, yeah, the second sample I sent them. And yeah, and uh, yeah, then from there, uh, finished all those sort of rough drafts, sent through the thumbnails and everything. And yeah. Um, yeah, I wasn't really too much in contact with you during the whole process, but uh, you were sort of communicating with Chelsea, uh, the sort of lead art director, and yeah, and so through. But um, that I was actually one of the things that I that um, and I actually was mostly talking to Nancy. Oh, so we had yeah. like multiple steps of people in between. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then I was doing all this stuff on like literally, I'd be calling. And Nancy goes to bed early, just so you know, <laughs> Nancy's like not get your sleep. Like people need to sleep. So like, I'm not trying to like, I'm glad she does it. She takes care of herself. Um, but when I'm in DC and she's here in Kansas and like, I don't get home until 10, there would be times when I would call her at 10 and she's like, sorry, I'm in, I'm in bed, but I'll get up. <laughs> as you're, you know, and then when I would come home, sometimes on Sundays, we would sit or, and I just remember feeling like, oh my God, it's taking me forever to get back to get back to everybody. So it was really strange. I don't know how you felt about it, but it felt really strange to me to have, like, there was like the, the writing part, there was mm -hmm. the illust, and then there was the illustrations. And then like, at least the stuff that I was seeing, at first, because it, the colors weren't there yet, and then adding in the colors, and then trying to figure, I, it was just like so interesting. To, and then to see how many people are involved, just on right. 
on the back end, which I only know about because of the emails. <laughs> there's a lot of people on those emails, but yeah, everybody's attached. So. Yeah. Can mm-hmm. you can you t- can you tell me what it was like to like? Um, so I remember one of the things that we talked about, and I I think you have like a uh, some of some uh, you, like you can share your screen and show some people stuff, but I was curious if you could talk a little bit about what it was like to try to get my mom character. Um, because yeah, I feel yeah, like, like this, sure. because I felt, I felt kind of like that was, um, that was one of, that was like one of the only things that I was like, Oh, I want to like, like we got to get him some pictures of my mom so he can <laughs> see what my mom looks like because she's had like, Everyone I think knows this. I adore my mother. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. She's had the same hairstyle since I was a tiny, tiny child. And so I was like, like, no matter what, we got to get the hair right. (laughs) Um, She's gone to straight hair now, but for a long time, she had curly hair. And uh, so I'm just curious if you could talk a little bit about, about that part. Um. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. It just kind of cut out a little bit about our, as you were talking there, but uh, you just want me to talk about like uh, your mom and yeah, doing mom the mom the... character. And then, I mean, even just like, how did you decide what the, what my, my mom character and, and my character would, would look like? Um, yeah, it's a really great question. Uh, mostly because um, like working in the traditional sort of woodland art style, it's, it's kind of hard to kind of get likenesses of people correct. Um, and usually like when I'm working, I don't really worry too much about that. I usually try to make the characters fairly androgynous and you can't really sort of tell. So the gender of them, I don't really Which want I love. to sort of put that into my artwork and sort of, um, yeah, with this, this book, I sort of had to create people that were real, right? Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of a sort of a struggle at first, uh, just because like the sort of art style is kind of two-dimensional. And um, yeah, it's kind of, you don't have too much to work with to sort of relate it to sort of like a, a real person. Um, so yeah, w- with your mother, it was, it was quite d- difficult just because she had that short hair, right? And um, I think um, that was sort of one of the hardest parts of the book was to get that uh, character right because it went sort of back and forth over and over and over um, making edits and whatnot but um, yeah eventually sort of we made quite a few changes to the character and eventually yeah it ended up um, turning out um, the way you you wanted it or you felt was uh, representing her the best um, yeah yeah it just it just took a little time but we, we <laughs> ended up getting it right in the end um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about just kind of the the process? And actually, you mentioned that your care that um, in your in the woodland style, a lot of times the characters will be um, uh, more like androgynous. And um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Because that's actually one of the things that um, I really loved was that. Um, I, and, and this is probably partly because of my um, wanting to make sure that I often say, I, like, I want to show up authentically um, as much as I want to always show up as authentically as possible. Um, this book is not just me. It's lots of, I mean, there are lots of different characters in here and that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. I, and I, one of the things I would tell people is I love that you, like, you would have no, there's not always a, this isn't like a simple, like, um, gender binary um, in, represented in, in, in these pictures where there are a number of people. Um, and I just, like, really appreciated that when I was, when I was going through and, and looking at it. I remember commenting on that, like, very early on. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. Usually when I'm doing uh, my own personal work, I yeah, you know, I try to, to keep the characters sort of like androgynous, like I said, because uh, it's mostly just because um, I want people to sort of see themselves in my artwork or sort of be able to relate to it, and I don't want to sort of um, 
sort of cater to a certain gender or whatnot. And I want sort of everybody to be included or feel like they are, um, or just make my art more inclusive. So I try to just yeah, keep it sort of uh, genderless or sort of uh, non-binary in a way. Um, yeah, just for that inclusivity and um, just because our culture is like that as well, like even in our language, we don't use those male and female pronouns. We use the language that uh, uh, is more inclusive to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I kind of wanted to sort of translate that to my artwork as well. And I try to do my best to do that so that everybody yeah. is sort of represented. Mm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so I know that you pulled up a couple of, uh, um, oh, I don't know what to call it, panels or something that you can share. Uh, I'm curious what you've, what, like, if you want to, do you have a, a favorite section or a couple of pages that you really um, got into when you were doing it? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I'm sharing a few here. I'll go to my favorite one. Um, my favorite one is definitely the fight scenes with you. <laughs> Uh, just because I, I just I just really enjoyed how the lighting turned out and just kind of all the movement and everything. And um, yeah, usually when I do sort of the traditional sort of woodland style, it's all sort of two dimensional. There's no sort of shading in it at all. So sort of creating this uh, style and making it a little more 3D and a little more modern uh, for this children's book, it was um, definitely an experience and it was um, sort of a challenge as well and I feel like this um, page with you and all these different uh, um, sort of uh, wrestling uh, positions for me like it turned out um, better than I expected in a way um, and for me yeah it was just like my definitely my favorite page sort of how it turned out and how sort of all the lighting sort of worked out and all the all the different angles and everything um, yeah it's definitely the most challenging page and the most page, the page I'm sort of most um, uh, happy with or uh, yeah. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, as well as like the first page here with uh, you and the crowd and even the last page is just just the depth to it as well. Um, mm -hmm. Like usually there's no sort of depth that's the or that level of depth within traditional within art style. Um, and even just like having those backgrounds and everything, uh, that's something I never really worked with before as well. So just having the crowd of people and having sort of the depth, the different layers to it um, for me, uh, that was a bit of a challenge to work out as well. And um, yeah, it definitely <laughs> turned out better <laughs> than expected. Um, and um, yeah, really just happy with how this page turned out too. Yeah, I know. I love, I, 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 I love this page this I mean the whole thing but I also am curious how did you decide so this picture um how'd you decide let's see you're getting to it you're getting to it there it is how'd you decide what um legal documents were going to be in that picture um I kind of just googled them and I I was looking for ones that sort of uh were related to um just indigenous history, um, as well as your history, like the treaty with the Winnebago. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like that was an important document to sort of show just because of your heritage. Um, and yeah, all these sort of have had a major impact on um, just indigenous law or how we treat indigenous people within, I guess, uh, well, how they do in the United States. Uh -huh. um, I also included the Indian Act, uh, just because even though that's Canadian, um, I felt there's like made a huge impact just on, you know, uh, just the politics between uh, settlers and uh, Canadians or even Native Americans in the States as well. So um, yeah, for me, it's just Googling and seeing what sort of, uh, what sort of uh, laws or documents uh, made the biggest impact within our history. Oh yeah. Which could, so it was interesting because I remember the first time I saw this page, um, I just remember being like, oh yeah, he got the, like the treaties in here, Indian Reorganization Act. And um, yeah, so I was, that was actually something that I had been wondering about for a while. And I just, I guess I kept forgetting to, 
to ask. So I'm glad we're <laughs> I'm glad we're clearing it up here. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like I, I don't have too much. I personally don't even have too much interest in politics. Like I follow it kind of loosely, um, but um, yeah. Probably so for me, it's kind of a learning experience just to like look at the sort of uh, um, sort of yeah the Constitution and everything and. Um, just sort of learn a bit about it myself as I was doing it. And uh, yeah, I, I just kind of threw it together and um, hope that uh, you and sort of Chelsea and Nancy like this. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, no, I thought um, the whole thing, it's so funny because I think that probably like the, your approach here of like it, it feels so understated how you're like, well, and then I just threw it together, uh, you know, and you literally have a picture of, me, of a flying arm bar in here. There's a flying <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that took some reference photos. I had to do some research for that. <laughs> <Just double -fighting. laughs> um, so one of the things like, okay, I'm gonna, I wanna show you my two favorite things. Okay. The first one's my just like real favorite picture, which is this one. Mm -hmm. The Bruce Lee. Yeah. My favorite part is the me and my mom walking and her like looking at me and I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. like when I think of what my childhood looked like, like this is what I imagine. Hmm. It's like me just like, talking and talking and talking and my mom just patiently like humoring me and you know answering all my questions um and and then telling me stories about stuff and so I just felt like this so this is my favorite that my my favorite picture because oh, really? uh, I feel like it captures my relationship with my mom at that age oh that's awesome um yeah this was actually the first one I did is the sample that I chose to sort of uh, do um to sort of get the the contract um yeah it was, it was just for me it's um it was cool to just try to get to, or to illustrate how you would be speaking or your voice and you know the story is called Charisse's big voice it's like how am I going to sort of communicate that or show that through the artwork um and yeah, so I just came up with this sort of speech bubble and you know, yeah. having sort of that conversation come to life uh, with uh, sort of Bruce Lee being uh, real and, you know, as you're talking about him, you know, he's actually doing what you're uh, saying he's doing, sort of kicking, you know, <laughs> or kicking yeah. a hole in the wall. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool that it is your favorite because, um, yeah, this is kind of drawn, I was drawn to it because it um, was a page that, um, I was able to be able to illustrate um, what I wanted to do with that book. Yeah. You know what just popped into my head is just how, first of all, how long this took us. <laughs> it sounds like you yeah. finished a whole nother project in the middle of us trying to get this thing done. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the other thing I was thinking about is how, how many changes we were like on, on, on my end, like how many changes we were making to the story. Um, I mean, and, and I don't, I'm curious how uh, it, it's interesting because we, you know, we had the story arc and knew essentially, I do feel like we changed one of the, one, one of the stories that was included or something. And maybe that was before, before um, uh, we ever sent anything to you. Um, or, oh, actually we wanted, I wanted to make sure that this story was in there. The, um, mommy, what am I? Um, oh, that's funny. I, I asked my mom, what am I? Uh, and, um, you know, and she says you're native American after she told me that wasn't a very nice question. And, um, you know, we're Ho-Chunk and I, I, I wanted to make sure that we included the, the what am I question mm -hmm. because. Um, she, or, sorry, did she sort of say that because she um, was raised that way that she should 
speak of her sort of indigenous heritage or she shouldn't feel proud of it? Um, is that why she sort of said, that's not a question you should ask? Oh, no, that's not a, the, um, what are, like, when, you know, when you're in, if, and I actually, I'm curious, like, uh, there were lots of times because I was n the only native person in the room um, mm -hmm. that, like, people would say, well, what are you? What, what are you? Because they could, because they couldn't, they couldn't tell what like race or ethnicity or whatever was in their head about it. Um, mm -hmm. And so people would say, what are you? Which is kind of like a not, well, it's not a very nice question to ask somebody. <laughs> um, and, uh, but I mean, I think that like kids uh, don't, like sometimes we end up hurting each other without realizing that that's what we're doing. They don't have that sort of filter. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's what she was saying is like, that's, it's not like just recognizing that it doesn't feel very good to right. have to come home and be like, I don't know what, like what, I don't know what they're saying to me. What does that mean? What are you like? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I really wanted to include that because it feels like a, a thing that happens. Um, you know, and I told my, when I told, talked to my brother about this, he like immediately was like, oh yeah, because he got that a lot too when he was mm -hmm. growing up. And then, um, and then I think too, like a lot of uh, people who are probably part of the um, LGBTQ two spirit community um, end up sometimes navigating that kind of like, what are you uh, situation? And it just like, does not feel good. And mm -hmm. so trying to make sure that we're, um, talking about, talking about, talking about stuff that ends up happening to a lot of people, but also in a way that's like, like acknowledges that like it, it doesn't feel good. Like that's not a, like, it's not very nice if you're the one who's on the receiving end of it. Um, and just kind of acknowledging that because I think sometimes, um, you know, we can end up feeling like we're the ones who are like, am I being too sensitive? Am I, you know, that sort of thing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What do you think about the uh, characters with the... Um, the regalia? The, the uh, federal or the US government move, forcing tribes off their homelands. What do I feel? I, I, I don't feel the best about them. <laughs> um, like what? What was it like drawing this? The, like this? Um... Image? Yeah. Um, yeah. It was kind of difficult because I didn't want to show imagery like that. You know, especially in a children's book where it's like, um, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, just I guess the real history. Like it, it is what happened, so it, it does need to be shown. Um, but it's like it's such. Um, for me, it's it's just like kind of like infuriating or frustrating. That, you know, just. Like this is what happened, and um, you know where your people were displaced and sort of forced off their land, and um, yeah, this is just it's just sort of very, very real, and it, it's um, it's yeah, I don't know, it's just hard to talk about, it. and like even though it is like a children's book, it's just like yeah, this is what happened, and you know you got to illustrate it somehow, so. Um, yeah, for me, it, was, it wasn't my favorite illustration, but uh, um, yeah. yeah, turned out. I know, and I think like that was actually for the words too. Um, it was hard to figure out how to, cause I was like, I can't, I can't gloss over uh, or like, well, it's a, it's a children's book, right? So we only have a certain number of words we can use or a certain number of images that we can use. Um, I didn't want to ignore or pretend. It feels like pretending if all I say is, you know, uh, my, my mom was removed from her family um, and put into the system. Um, to say that and, and say that, you know, we're like, Ho-Chunk and Winnebago from Nebraska is like long time ago used to be all the same people. It feels if I don't say something else about the long history that we've got going on here, mm -hmm. it feels like 
definitely feels like not showing up authentically. Mm-hmm. And um, so it's interesting. I, I, it almost feels like we were having a similar kind of um, like there was some kind of emotional impact about like trying to decide how you're honest and authentic and also recognize that like we're talking about a children's book. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I feel definitely like this page was the hardest one to do and just to sort of be able to illustrate it um, properly or authentically um, as well as like truthfully. Uh, yes. But I, yeah, I didn't want to so show sort of like a weakness with the, in the indigenous characters as well, like like mm. they're sort of like pushed over, rolled over. Um, yeah, so I mean, like for me, it's just like, I guess having that rifle there showed that, you know, they had like this sort of power over or they wanted to have that power. Um, mm. And there was sort of an imbalance there. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I'm glad I got to ask you about this. Um, about this specific, like these pages, because it feels like, um, I think that it, it does feel like one of the harder, like harder pieces to at least to navigate, like how, how, how to do this. And, mm-hmm. but then also it's one of the pieces that I'm like most glad that we have in there. Uh, That's true. That's true. So, which, I don't know, maybe that's how a lot of stuff is where you're, it feels kind of like, why does all the most important stuff feel like it's so hard? (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I wanted to, I want to make sure, I think there's probably some like audience Q&A. I mean, I could sit here and ask you about every single picture and lots of details about every single picture. Um, is that even the right, should I, what illustration? I should probably say illustration. It, it doesn't matter too much. Picture okay. Illustration. okay. Um, but, but I think we should maybe see about getting to some audience Q and A. And yes, yeah. see, I have those questions here. here. Right. Hello, I'm back. Thank you for that incredible discussion, by the way, that was extremely powerful. And before I get to questions, I wanted to apologize. In my rushed introduction, I mispronounced the name of Joshua's nation, the Wakasig nation, and I'm so sorry. Um, the Wakasig nation. Um, well, oh, I'm so sorry. This again. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yes. Uh, so, are you all fine with moving to audience questions? Yep. All righty. Uh, our first question emailed to me from Malore. As a Native woman in the LGBTQ plus two spirit community, how do you balance your connection to your Native community while being immersed in a powerful non-Native world? Mm. That's a really good question. Um, there's a couple things I would say to that. One is... Um, My, so my mom was, because my mom was in the army when I was growing up uh, we, and we moved all over, um, I feel like we've had to, like my mom, of course, when I was a kid, it wasn't like I was making a lot of decisions, um, but, but there had to always be an intentionality around um, like going to Wisconsin, um, staying connected to um, our family and, and the nation and that sort of thing. And then now as an adult, um, some of it is, some of it is that is the same kind of thing, although I don't get to, uh, well, it's been a pandemic, but even before that, I feel like I don't get to go um, to Wisconsin as often as I, uh, definitely as often as I used to. Um, and I can, t- like, I, f- I can feel a difference when I don't get a chance to, um, to do that. But I also try to, um, stay in, like, stay in contact with, um, uh, family and friends and, 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 and then sometimes folks come to DC. Um, uh, I, I'm always, actually, I'm surprised at how often Ho-Chunks and 
people from Kansas are in DC like all the time. Um, and so I end up getting the chance to see folks a lot. Um, but then like past that, which is um, not necessarily uh, Ho-Chunk specific, but um, I do get the chance to talk to a lot of native youth. I get a chance to talk to a lot of tribal leaders. Um, and um, there's actually like a, 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 a good amount of um, native folks out in DC. And um, I mean, honestly, like sometimes I just like, I'm like, okay, I have like, <laughs> I got to hang out with some folks um, uh, that I've known for a long time that are not people that I know from being in Congress and just trying to like stay grounded in that way is really helpful. Um, and then, uh, I mean, and then of course, like I spent a ton of time with my mom and, and my family and stuff here in Kansas. There's like a number of us who are here in Kansas. Um, yeah. And then I was going to make some joke about, you know, watching, I don't know, watching a lot of native movies or something. I don't know, but I couldn't come up with anything. So. <laughs> it's real interesting though. Oh, you're muted. The, the question, because I feel like I have, I feel like I have to be very, very intentional about um, also it's like, it's like weird to be a member of Congress um, to go from being like really an, a pretty ordinary person just in terms of like got my little life here in Kansas, you know, I'm going to, going to work. Um, uh, and then when I was doing community and economic development work, I wore like hoodies and jeans to work for like four years. <laughs> um, so then to go out to, to DC, um, you know, it, it's just like a very huge shift because um, DC has, to me, DC seems like a big city. I know a bunch of people don't really think of it as a big city, but to me, it feels like um, a, a big city and it's a lot to navigate. Yeah, I definitely agree. I find it huge. <laughs> so as big as Vancouver. <laughs> I'm actually not even living in Vancouver. Um, I just moved to Victoria. Oh, did you? Oh, cool. yeah, oh. on the island. Very nice. I oh. definitely am coming to visit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for that answer. Uh, our next question is from Morgan, and it is, what inspires you? And that is for both of you. Oh. Um, what inspires me? Uh, I could go first. If you, yeah, you if go you like. first. Um, I guess uh, yeah, just for me, um, my main focus when I create art is to sort of inspire Indigenous youth, um, just to make them feel proud of who they are, uh, mm -hmm. is one of um, my biggest motivations. Because uh, you know, for me, growing up, I, I never had sort of any of um, like people like Sharice, people to um, like successful Indigenous people who um, have made a difference in the world that there wasn't hasn't really been too much of that uh, when I was growing up. And um, especially um, like I, I, yeah, when I was growing up, I was not even taught about my culture at all. And I didn't really learn too much about it until I was in my early twenties. Um, so to just, um, yeah, give that inspiration to the youth and sort of show that our culture is really beautiful. Uh, for me, like I, I find my culture is like just the spirituality uh, the teachings behind it, um, just like the artwork, I find it just like one of those, <laughs> like a really beautiful culture. And um, I had not known that when I was a kid. Um, to so yeah, just to show like youth that um, that that is there, and then you, you, that they have something to be proud of. Um, for me, that's um, what inspires me or um, keeps me motivated, keeps me going. Is um, yeah, just being able to make a difference in their lives any way I can, really. Um, and I feel like, yeah, this book will be able to sort of uh, give uh, that empowerment to a lot of Indigenous youth, for sure. Absolutely. Um, that's a hard answer to follow. 
uh, one, um, one of the things that I think about a lot is, um, so sometimes I think about how, obviously we're still here. There's lots of indigenous people, um, original inhabitants and stewards of this, of this land. Um, but I do also spend less so these days, but I remember for a while, like, I felt like I spent a lot of time, um, feeling almost like a sense of dread because sometimes I think about how there are so few of us and like, depending on what we do right now, we like might not be here in some number of generations. Um, and I feel like a lot of what I do, why I do what I do um, has been because the like, not that I think I'm gonna like, like directly see the impact, but like the healthier we are, the more um, we like feel seen and are seen. Um, the like, and then and then because of my skills, I started moving into like policy and stuff um, to actually make it so that people like have access to things and. Um, so I think that like initially some of the like reason that I started like doing what I was doing was um, not out of a feeling of inspiration, but more of a feeling of like fear about what the future looks like for native people. Mm -hmm. um, and now I get the chance to like talk to so many people that, and, and hear from so many people and like young people in particular. And um, so Joshua, when you were talking about like young people and like them, like their, what their future looks like and um, like wanting to play a part and helping them see how, uh, uh, amazing and resilient and strong and like powerful, um, like indigenous ways of being can, um, can manifest. I feel like that is more now the root of where I like get more drive, which is a much better place than doing things out of being scared. Right. Like, um, but I think that a lot of us, uh, and us, like, I, of course, I mean like native folks, but also like humans, I feel like a lot of us ha have um, unfortunately like felt invisible or felt like we're small um, or felt like it doesn't like, it doesn't matter if we're here or not here. And I think that Anytime we can do stuff to make sure, particularly our young people, but everybody that, that like, absolutely you're in the right place. You're supposed to be here. What you're doing matters. Your, your voice matters. Um, you're not invisible. Your experience is, is super important and can be so powerful. Um, I think that like, that's the kind of thing that it feels like if we, if we can get more of that out into the world, it will, it can really make a, a huge difference. Thank you both for those really powerful answers. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that sort of leads me to my next question. The title is Big Voice. Um, that sort of has its own really powerful story. Uh, would you like to tell us about why you chose the title Sharice's Big Voice? Um, yeah, so I had, you know what? 
Oh, I don't think it's here. I have a book actually called, it's a picture book and it's Ho-Chunk, People of the Big Voice. Uh, I can't believe it. I don't know where it's at. I've moved to, I've moved around too many times. Um, and uh, so for a long time, we would, you know, I would always tell, tell people Ho-Chunk is people of the big voice. Um, and that's true, but there's also a deeper traditional, like um, meaning of Ho-Chunk, which is sacred voice. And so um, there are like stories and traditions of, um, of the Ho-Chunk language um, when you speak Ho-Chunk, you're, you can speak directly to the creator. And, um, and I think that one, I'm so glad that uh, John Green Deer wrote some back matter. So for anybody who looks at the book uh, or reads the book or, or, or buys it or whatever, um, please like make sure to, to read through the back matter that's uh, about the Ho-Chunk. Um, and you know it's obviously not super super long, um, but it. But I was really glad that we got the chance to include some information about Ho Chunk Nation um, because uh, too often other people get to write the histories and narratives about um, Native people and um, and tribes and tribal histories. Uh, for the mainstream. And so like getting the chance to be able to share that was um, pretty, felt pretty huge. So there's like the tribal aspect of it, right? Like I'm Ho-Chunk. Um, and then uh, for anybody who's already read the book or has just been watching this, I talk a lot. Um, I, <laughs> I talked a lot as a kid. I talk a lot now, um, but like so much of the book is about like the, my journey of like learning to, you know, I got in trouble when I was a kid um, in school all the time for talking too much. Like she's, a, she's, she's doing well, but she talks too much. You know, I put her out in the hallway and she kept talking. I, you know, I set her by my desk and next thing I knew I was talking to her. Um, but, but I also learned to like listen and I learned so many skills because of my, um, because of my chattiness. And I just thought it would be like, you know, uh, it made more sense to be Sharice's big voice than Sharice's sacred voice. No, I'm just kidding. That was not even, on, that was not even on the table as an option. Just <laughs> about that. Um, but it kind of felt, it kind of felt like a cool, like way to, to bring both of those pieces together. Um, you know, my coming into, um, and learning how and, and, um, embracing my big voice and also like acknowledging the kind of history and, and tradition of the, of, of Ho-Chunk. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a powerful title and just such a powerful book. It's, um, it's just like every page is so beautiful and I'm so glad that y'all took us through so many of the pages. Um, I know you already talked about your favorite parts of the book. Um, what are some main takeaways that you hope readers have when they read it? Joshua, when you were doing um. the artwork, was that something that you're, that, you, that like, I just feel like it's so clear from the art that you were like, even when you were explaining the stuff about the, um, the removal, um, like the way you were talking about, like, I wanted to make sure that they, that the, um, indigenous people didn't seem weak because they weren't, mm -hmm. um, there was a, you know, I, I'm curious, like, is that something that you, um, maybe whether you thought about it in the moment or like now that the book is out, if when people look at the book, if there's, that's a. Um, if it's something they think about or, or. If it's something like, is that something that you were like, oh, I hope, I hope when people look at this, this is what they take away from it. Um, yeah, I, I definitely see it as a, 
form of communication, even those like little details, um, something. Um, I try to yeah, put as much thought as into it as I can. Um, it's funny how you were saying like when you're younger and when you're growing up, like you used your voice a lot and you got in trouble uh, for speaking so much. Cause for me, like I was the exact opposite. And instead of like speaking, I'd be drawing all the time. Like on all of my tests, um, I'd have doodles all along the side of my test. So I always get in trouble for just drawing on my pages all the time. So um, for me, like this is my, I guess voice is my form of communication. Um, and yeah, I definitely try to sort of, um, um, I guess speak with it and try to convey, um, as much as I can, you know, that you can't really, uh, convey through the words. It's like, yeah, telling its own sort of story in a way. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, for me, like, I hope, uh, geez, I just, I just hope uh, people love the artwork anyways, or that they, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a great story to, uh, like Charissa's or story is like, um, so inspiring. And I feel like, yeah, I hope uh, kids or whoever reads it can take away something um, or just feel inspired once they read it or just feel like that they are, have that importance and that they can accomplish um, their dreams and follow through with that. Um, and I feel like um, it is a story that sort of shows that it is possible. Um, and yeah, just to be a part of it for me, like it's just um, a really awesome experience. So um, yeah, that's pretty much my answer. <laughs> Um, yeah, I feel like the, the thing that I hope, one of the main things I remember, I remember Nancy and I talking about this when I was like, I, I don't want people to think that this is a book about how to run for Congress. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's not like get in trouble when you're a kid for talking too much, try martial arts work at Sonic when you're in college, boom, you're going to be able to run for Congress. Like that's not what the, you know, I, I, I more wanted, I want people to be able to, um, or I hope that people can see that like so many of the, th I feel like so much of my story is actually like, it's a lot of it is like ordinary stuff that people know what it's like. A lot of people know what it's like to be raised by a single parent um, to, you know, like, uh, be scared to talk, to, like to be scared to, to, to do something and then do it, um, anyway to, um, you know, get in trouble when you're a kid because you like, maybe you talk too much or maybe you doodle a lot, like, um, because the, the story isn't like me saying like, here, here's a right way to do things, but rather here's a way to do things. And all of us have our own way. All of us have our own path um, and that's okay. And that's good actually. Um, and we just like, let's embrace it. Uh, and so I just hope that like when people read it, that that's, that that's what it feels like is like, oh yeah, my, maybe my story is not exactly like this or maybe it won't be in the future. Cause if you're, um, I think, you know, if you're a kid reading this, I hope one, any young people who read this can see that um, I don't, I'm not trying to like, I think we don't give young people enough credit for what they understand. So I didn't like spell every single little thing out. You know, I wasn't like, here's why it matters that I did X because, you know, I didn't do that. It was like young people absorb everything. So I was like, I don't need to, I don't need to spell it every single thing out. I just need to like share what I learned. Um, and I, I hope that people can see that when they're, when they're reading it. Yeah, I know I definitely could. I'm not a young person, but <laughs> I just found it so powerful. Is it okay before we go, if I share my favorite page? Oh yeah, I'd love to, I, it's okay with me. <laughs> I just love this conversation here when you're talking about home and just the picture so clearly conveys exactly what is so comfortable about that moment. And it's really beautiful. And I just hope that everyone gets the book, uh, which you can do in the link on the side there. Um, it was just such an honor to host 
both of you. Thank you so much for joining us today um, and sharing your words and insights. And thank you everyone for being here. Don't forget you can still click the link in the chat box to get your copy of Sharice's Big Voice. And to find out about more events, check out our website for updated listings. You can also follow our, follow our Children and Teens Department on social media. The handle is also posted in the chat. And you can watch our past events on our Politics and Paris YouTube channel. Uh, before we go, is there anything else either of you would like to add while we're all still here together? Joshua, can you tell us what, you're, what you have coming out or what's out now? What's like the next thing? I gotta go, I gotta go get um. it. <laughs> I've got another book coming out uh, this fall. Um, it's called Thunder in the Noise Storm. Um, I'm also working on a indigenous language app or it'd be, I guess, an Anishinaabe language app. Um, so I made a hundred um, illustrations based on Ojibwe words or Anishinaabe words. And um, yeah, I'm going to put it into an app so people can sort of learn how to um, learn the language, I guess. Uh, and it'll be sort of more gamified so yeah it'd be oh, nice. more of a game uh, so they can sort of play it and learn the language at the same time oh, and um, so that's one of my next big projects um she's and yeah i got a couple more contracts signed for more books <laughs> um, awesome. so that i'll be finishing another one later this year and then another one at the start of 2022 um so yeah um lots to work on um that's, that's pretty much it. Besides like my own personal artwork, I screen print here and just sell artwork on my sort of website. But And your website is? Uh, JoshuaMangizik.com. I can leave it in the chat here. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I love it. Well, thank you for hosting us tonight. Of course, thank you so much for coming. It was such an honor to have you. And I'm so excited for everyone to read the book and to check out your upcoming projects, Joshua. And I just, this has been such an amazing night. Thank you both so much. Uh, and to our audience, uh, thank you for joining us and thank, uh, keep reading widely and expanding your world and stay safe out there.